The Acropolis of Athens is an ancient citadel located on a rocky outcrop above the city of Athens and contains the remains of several ancient buildings of great architectural and historical significance, the most famous being the Parthenon. The word Acropolis is from the Greek words alpha kappa rho omicron nu and pi omicron lambda iota sigma. The term Acropolis is generic and there are many other Acropolis in Greece. During ancient times the Acropolis of Athens was known also more properly as Scropia, after the legendary serpent man, Cecrops, the supposed first Athenian king. While there is evidence that the hill was inhabited as far back as the 4th millennium BC, it was Pericles in the 5th century BC who coordinated the construction of the buildings whose present remains are the site's most important ones, including the Parthenon, the Propylia, the Erechtheion, and the Temple of Athena Nike. The Parthenon and the other buildings were seriously damaged during the 1687 siege by the Venetians during the Mauryan War when gunpowder being stored in the Parthenon by the Ottomans was hit by a cannonball and exploded. Chapter 1 History Chapter 1 Section 1 Early Settlement The Acropolis is located on a flattish topped rock that rises 150 meters above sea level in the city of Athens with a surface area of about 3 hectares. While the earliest artifacts date to the Middle Neolithic era, there have been documented habitations in Attica from the early Neolithic period. There is little doubt that a Mycenaean Megan palace stood upon the hill during the Late Bronze Age. Nothing of this Megan survives except, probably, a single limestone column base and pieces of several sandstone steps. Soon after the palace was constructed, a Cyclopean massive circuit wall was built, 760 meters long, up to 10 meters high, and ranging from 3.5 to 6 meters thick. From the end of the Helladic Eobon, this wall would serve as the main defense for the Acropolis until the 5th century. The wall consisted of two parapets built with large stone blocks and cemented with an earth mortar called Implecton. The wall uses typical Mycenaean conventions in that it followed the natural contour of the terrain and its gate, which was towards the south, was arranged obliquely, with a parapet and tower overhanging the incomer's right-hand side, thus facilitating defense. There were two lesser approaches up the hill on its north side, consisting of steep, narrow flights of steps cut in the rock. Homer is assumed to refer to this fortification when he mentions the strong-built house of Erechtheus. At some time before the 13th century BC, an earthquake caused a fissure near the northeastern edge of the Acropolis. This fissure extended some 35 meters to a bed of soft marl in which a well was dug. An elaborate set of stairs was built and the well served as an invaluable, protected source of drinking water during times of siege for some portion of the Mycenaean period. Chapter 1 Section 2 Archaic Acropolis Not much is known about the architectural appearance of the Acropolis until the Archaic Era. During the 7th and the 6th centuries BC, the site was controlled by Chilon during the failed Chilonian Revolt, and twice by Pesistratos, each of these were attempts directed at seizing political power by coups d'état. Apart from the Hecatompedon mentioned later, Pesistratos also built an entry gate, or Propylia. Nevertheless, it seems that a nine-gate wall, the Iniapylon, had been built around the Acropolis Hill and incorporating the biggest water spring, the Clepsydra, at the northwestern fort. A temple to Athena Polias, the tutelary deity of the city, was erected between 570 and 550 BC. This Doric limestone building, from which many relics survive, is referred to as the Hecatompedon, a Parthenon, H. Architecture or Bluebeard Temple, after the pedimental three-bodied man-serpent sculpture, whose beards were painted dark blue. Whether this temple replaced an older one, or just a sacred precinct or altar, is not known. Probably, the Hecatompedon was built where the Parthenon now stands. Between 529 and 520 BC yet another temple was built by the Pisistratids, the old temple of Athena, usually referred to as the Archaios Neos. This temple of Athena Polias was built upon the Dorkfeld foundations, between the Erechtheion, and the still-standing Parthenon. 
Archaios Neos was destroyed as part of the Achaemenid destruction of Athens during the Second Persian invasion of Greece during 480-479 BC, however, the temple was probably reconstructed during 454 BC, since the treasury of the Delian League was transferred in its Episodomos. The temple may have been burnt down during 406-405 BC as Xenophon mentions that the old temple of Athena was set afire. Pausanias does not mention it in his 2nd century AD description of Greece. Around 500 BC, the Hecatompedon was dismantled to make place for a new grander building, the older Parthenon. For this reason, Athenians decided to stop the construction of the Olympian temple, which was connoted with the tyrant Persistratos and his sons, and, instead, used the Piraeus limestone destined for the Olympian to build the older Parthenon. In order to accommodate the new temple, the south part of the summit was cleared, made level by adding some 8,000 ton blocks of limestone, a foundation 11 meters deep at some points, and the rest was filled with soil kept in place by the retaining wall. However, after the victorious Battle of Marathon in 490 BC, the plan was revised and marble was used instead. The limestone phase of the building is referred to as Pre-Parthenon I and the marble phase as Pre-Parthenon II. In 485 BC, construction stalled to save resources as Xerxes became king of Persia, and war seemed imminent. The older Parthenon was still under construction when the Persians invaded and sacked the city in 480 BC. The building was burned and looted, along with the ancient temple and practically everything else on the rock. After the Persian crisis had subsided, the Athenians incorporated many architectural parts of the unfinished temple into the newly built northern curtain wall of the Acropolis, where they served as a prominent war memorial and can still be seen today. The devastated site was cleared of debris. Statuary, cult objects, religious offerings and unsalvageable architectural members were buried ceremoniously in several deeply dug pits on the hill serving conveniently as a fill for the artificial plateau created around the classic Parthenon. This Persian debris was the richest archaeological deposit excavated on the Acropolis by 1890. Chapter 1 Section 3 – The Periclean Building Program After winning at Eurymedon during 468 BC, Simon and Themistocles ordered the reconstruction of the southern and northern walls of the Acropolis. Most of the major temples, including the Parthenon, were rebuilt by order of Pericles during the so-called Golden Age of Athens. Phidias, an Athenian sculptor, and Ictinus and Callicrates, two famous architects, were responsible for the reconstruction. During 437 BC, Nesicles started building the Propylia, a monumental gate at the western end of the Acropolis with Doric columns of pentelic marble built partly upon the old Propylia of Pesistratos. These colonnades were almost finished, during 432 BC and had two wings, the northern one decorated with paintings by Polygnotus. About the same time, south of the Propylia, buildings started on the small Ionic temple of Athena Nike in pentelic marble with tetra-style porches, preserving the essentials of Greek temple design. After an interruption caused by the Peloponnesian War, the temple was finished, during the time of Nicias' peace, between 421 BC and 409 BC. Construction of the elegant temple of Erechtheion in pentelic marble was in accordance with a complex plan which took account of the extremely uneven ground and the need to circumvent several shrines in the area. The entrance, facing east, is lined with six ionic columns. Unusually, the temple has two porches, one on the northwest corner borne by ionic columns, the other, to the southwest, supported by huge female figures or caryatids. The eastern part of the temple was dedicated to Athena Polias, while the western part, serving the cult of the archaic king Poseidon Erechtheus, housed the altars of Hephaestus and Vautos, brother of Erechtheus. Little is known about the original plan of the interior which was destroyed by fire during the 1st century BC and has been rebuilt several times. During the same period, a combination of sacred precincts including the temples of Athena Polias, Poseidon, Erechtheus, Cecrops, Hersey, Pandrosos, and Aglaurus, with its core porch or caryatids balcony was begun. 
Between the temple of Athena Nike and the Parthenon, there was the sanctuary of Artemis Brauronia, the goddess represented as a bear and worshipped in the Deme of Brauron. According to Pausanias, a wooden statue, or Zoanon of the goddess and a statue of Artemis made by Praxiteles during the 4th century BC were both in the sanctuary. Behind the Propylia, Phidias' gigantic bronze statue of Athena Promachos, built between 450 BC and 448 BC, dominated. The base was 1.50 meters high, while the total height of the statue was 9 meters. The goddess held a lance, the gilt tip of which could be seen as a reflection by crews on ships rounding Cape Sunio, and a giant shield on the left side, decorated by Miss with images of the fight between the centaurs and the lapiths. Other monuments that have left almost nothing visible to the present day are the Chorkovk, the Pandrosane, Pandion's Sanctuary, Athena's Altar, Zeus Peleus's Sanctuary and, from Roman times, the Circular Temple of Augustus and Rome. Chapter 1 Section 4 Hellenistic and Roman Period During the Hellenistic and Roman periods, many of the existing buildings in the area of the Acropolis were repaired, due to damage from age and occasionally, war. Monuments to foreign kings were erected, notably those of the Italid kings of Pergamon Italos II, and Eumenes II, in front of the Propylaea. These were rededicated during the early Roman Empire to Augustus or Claudius, and Agrippa, respectively. Eumenes was also responsible for constructing a stoa on the south slope, not unlike that of Italos in the Agora below. During the Julio-Claudian period, the Temple of Rome and Augustus, a small, round edifice, about 23 meters from the Parthenon, was to be the last significant ancient construction on the summit of the rock. Around the same time, on the north slope, in a cave next to the one dedicated to Pan since the classical period, a sanctuary was founded where the archons dedicated to Apollo on assuming office. During 161 AD, on the south slope, the Roman Herodes Atticus built his grand amphitheatre or Odeon. It was destroyed by the invading Herulians a century later but was reconstructed during the 1950s. During the 3rd century, under threat from a Herulian invasion, repairs were made to the Acropolis walls, and the boiler gate was constructed to restrict entrance in front of the Propylaea, thus returning the Acropolis to use as a fortress. Chapter 1 Section 5, Byzantine Latin and Ottoman period. During the Byzantine period, the Parthenon was used as a church, dedicated to the Virgin Mary. During the Latin Duchy of Athens, the Acropolis functioned as the city's administrative center, with the Parthenon as its cathedral, and the Propylia as part of the Ducal Palace. A large tower was added, the Franco Piagos, demolished during the 19th century. After the Ottoman conquest of Greece, the Parthenon was used as the garrison headquarters of the Turkish army, and the Erechtheum was turned into the governor's private harem. The buildings of the Acropolis suffered significant damage during the 1687 siege by the Venetians in the Mauryan War. The Parthenon, which was being used as a gunpowder magazine, was hit by artillery shot, and damaged severely. During subsequent years, the Acropolis was a site of bustling human activity with many Byzantine, Frankish, and Ottoman structures. The dominant feature during the Ottoman period, was a mosque inside the Parthenon, complete with a minaret. The Acropolis was besieged thrice during the Greek War of Independence, two sieges from the Greeks in 1821-1822 and one from the Ottomans in 1826-1827. A new bulwark named after Odysseus Andrautsos was built by the Greeks between 1822 and 1825 to protect the recently rediscovered Clepsydra Spring which became the sole fresh water supply of the fortress. After independence, most features that dated from the Byzantine, Frankish and Ottoman periods were cleared from the site in an attempt to restore the monument to its original form cleansed of all later additions. German neoclassicist architect Leo von Klenz was responsible for the restoration of the Acropolis in the 19th century, according to German historian Wolf Seidel, as described in his book Bavarians in Greece. Chapter 1 Section 6, Second World War 
At the beginning of the Axis occupation of Greece in 1941, German soldiers raised the Nazi German war flag over the Acropolis. It would be taken down by Manilis Gletsos and Apostolos Santos in one of the first acts of resistance. In 1944 Greek Prime Minister Georgios Papandreou arrived on the Acropolis to celebrate liberation from the Nazis. Chapter 2 – Archaeological Remains The entrance to the Acropolis was a monumental gateway termed the Propylia. To the south of the entrance is the tiny temple of Athena Nike. At the center of the Acropolis is the Parthenon or Temple of Athena Parthenos. East of the entrance and north of the Parthenon, is the temple known as the Erechtheum. South of the platform that forms the top of the Acropolis there are also the remains of the ancient, though often remodeled, Theatre of Dionysus. A few hundred meters away, there is the now partially reconstructed Odeon of Herodes Atticus. All the valuable ancient artifacts are situated in the Acropolis Museum, which resides on the southern slope of the same rock, 280 meters from the Parthenon. Chapter 2 Section 1 Site Plan Site Plan of the Acropolis at Athens showing the major archaeological remains. Parthenon Old Temple of Athena Erechtheum Statue of Athena Promachos Propylia Temple of Athena Nike Eleusinian Sanctuary of Artemis Brauronia or Brauronion Chalkoke Pandrosane Arephorion Altar of Athena Sanctuary of Zeus Peleus Sanctuary of Pandion Odeon of Herodes Atticus Stoa Eumenes Sanctuary of Asclepios or Asclepion Theatre of Dionysus Eleutheus Odeon of Pericles Temenos of Dionysus Eleutheus A Glorion? Chapter 3 The Acropolis Restoration Project the Acropolis Restoration Project began in 1975 with the goal to reverse the decay of centuries of attrition, pollution, destruction from military actions, and misguided past restorations. The project included collection and identification of all stone fragments, even small ones, from the Acropolis and its slopes and the attempt was made to restore as much as possible using reassembled original material, with new marble from Mount Pentelicus used sparingly. All restoration was made using titanium dowels and is designed to be completely reversible, in case future experts decide to change things. A combination of cutting-edge modern technology, and extensive research and reinvention of ancient techniques were used. The Parthenon colonnades, largely destroyed by Venetian bombardment, during the 17th century, were restored, with many wrongly assembled columns now properly placed. The roof and floor of the Propylia were partly restored, with sections of the roof made of new marble and decorated with blue and gold inserts, as in the original. Restoration of the Temple of Athena Nike was completed in 2010. A total of 2,675 tons of architectural members were restored, with 686 stones reassembled from fragments of the originals, 905 patched with new marble and 186 parts made entirely of new marble. A total of 530 cubic meters of new pentelic marble were used. In 2021, the addition of new reinforced concrete paths to the site to improve accessibility caused controversy among archaeologists. Chapter 4 – Cultural Significance Every four years, the Athenians had a festival called the Great Panathenia that rivaled the Olympic Games in popularity. During the festival, a procession traveled through the city via the Panathenaic Way and culminated on the Acropolis. There, a new robe of woven wool was placed on either the statue of Athena Polias in the Erechtheum or on the statue of Athena Parthenos in the Parthenon. Within the later tradition of Western civilization and classical revival, the Acropolis, from at least the mid-18th century on, has often been invoked as a key symbol of the Greek legacy and of the glories of classical Greece. Most of the artifacts from the temple are housed today in the Acropolis Museum at the foot of the ancient rock. Chapter 5, 
geology. The Acropolis is a clip consisting of two lithostratigraphic units, the Athens schist and the overlying Acropolis limestone. The Athens schist is a soft reddish rock dating from the Upper Cretaceous period. The original sediments were deposited in a river delta approximately 72 million years ago. The Acropolis limestone dates from the Upper Jurassic period, predating the underlying Athens schist by about 30 million years. The Acropolis limestone was thrust over the Athens schist by compressional tectonic forces, forming a nap or overthrust sheet. Erosion of the limestone nap led to the eventual detachment of the Acropolis, forming the present-day feature. Where the Athens schist and the limestone meet there are springs and karstic caves. Many of the hills in the Athens region were formed by the erosion of the same nap as the Acropolis. These include the hills of Lycabetos, Areopagus, and Mausion. The marble utilized to construct the buildings of the Acropolis was sourced from the quarries of Mount Pentelicus, a mountain to the northeast of the city. Chapter 5 Section 1 Geological Issues The limestone that the Acropolis is built upon is unstable because of the erosion and tectonic shifts that the region is prone to. This instability can cause rock slides that cause damage to the historic site. Various measures have been implemented to protect the site including retaining walls, drainage systems and rock bolts. These measures work to counter the natural processes that threaten the historic site.